Now before I go ahead and open up the Access Program, I want you to know that I'll be creating and saving all my database files into this folder here on my desktop, the Exercises folder. In fact, let me double click on it and open it up. I already have quite a few files in here. Let me ask you, which file belongs to which program? Well, there's two ways that you can find out. You can either look at the icon, which you can associate the colors there. This icon with that one, it must be Access or I don't know if you can see the uh, details of the icon, but if I come up here in the command bar and click on the uh, drop down arrow, and let's make the uh, icons large. Whoa, there you go. Large A, large A must be access. I'm going to go back and click on the drop down arrow and go back to my tiny list view. That way I can manage more files within the smaller window frame here. The other way you can find out besides the icon is by looking at the other end, which is called the extension or the extended name of the file. In other words, anytime you're in a program and you save a file, you give it a name, right? Like I gave it Table Data, Report Basics, Inventory, Form Basics. And then when I save it, immediately the operating system tags on an extended name. So it associates that extension or that extended name with that program, like ACC, Access DB Database, so Access Database, XLSX, Excel, and PPTX, or PPT, think of it, PowerPoint. Better yet, you can actually watch my Windows 7 training video, and I cover all this. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here, and you can uh, either double click on one of those files to open up that file in the associated Access Database program, or just go ahead and let's double click on the icon here, and there's the Access program. So anytime you open up the Access 2010 program, this is going to be your starting view, and it's going to ask you one of two questions. Either do you want to go ahead and create a database, either a blank one or using one of the templates down below, or do you want to go ahead and open up an existing database, either on your computer, you know, your desktop, or on the network? And I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my existing databases for two reasons. One, I want to show you what a completed database looks like. And two, I want to go over the environment so you have an idea later on when we go ahead and we create a database from scratch exactly what to expect. You also want to keep in mind that creating a database in Access is a process. It's not just a couple of clicks, but if you're patient, you'll find so much more flexibility when it comes to gleaning information out of your database. It'll be precise and organized. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Open button. I'm going to come over here in the Navigation pane, click on the Desktop, because as you recall, coming over here in the main window, that on my desktop is my Exercises folder. Double-click on that. In that, I have all my databases. I'm going to go ahead and double-click on Books. And that's what a completed database looks like. Well, it's relative. A completed database doesn't have to have these other three objects. Remember, a database has to have at least one table, a table of data. And I've got three of them here. And then from that data, I can create a query and pull out and query from the data, not all of the information in there, but just bits and pieces. And then the forms can be based upon queries, which are based upon tables, a way of entering in information into my tables, and also reports, a way to pull information out of my tables, or I can also pull them out of queries, which are, again, are based upon tables. So over here in my navigation pane, you see these little arrows. I can collapse them so I don't see the tables because, you know, if you have thousands of tables, I mean, that could go all the way down. You can keep scrolling. So I can collapse it if I just want to work on my two queries here or expand it and work on my tables. You can also click on this uh, drop-down arrow, and you can say you want to filter by group. You just want to see queries. So all the other objects are hidden except the queries, so you can just work on queries. Click on the drop-down arrow, and you can do forms or click on it and say you want to see all of the objects. That way you're not bogged down with scrolling if you have a lot of objects there. You could just work on one or another, but not all of them at the same time unless you want to. Now I want to go over the environment of access here, starting from top and going down to the bottom. Now starting up at the top in the upper left hand corner here, new to Access 2010 is that cute little icon. Over to the right you have what's called the Quick Access Toolbar. It's called that because you can quickly access the tools on that bar in a single click. If I wanted to save something, I could go ahead and click the Save button and automatically save it. I'll show you how to customize to add or remove icons from that toolbar in a later training video. And then over to the right, you have what's known as the Title Bar because there's the title of my database, Books. And then over to the right, it has the uh, name of the foundation of the database. In other words, back in Access 2007, Microsoft made some huge changes to the foundation of the program and it's been carried over into Access 2010, which is nice. And then over to the right, you have the uh, name of the program that we have open. Again, it's Access. And then over to the far right, you have the Minimize, Restore Down, and then the Close, if you want to click on that button to close out of the program here, which we won't. 
Then down below you have what's called the ribbon. Think of it like one big large toolbar with a bunch of tabs up at the top. You want to go from one to another, just go ahead and click on those tabs. As you go from one tab to the next, you'll notice down below that you have a bunch of icons. If you want to know what those icons or buttons do, hover over it and it'll tell you. You can go ahead and create a table. And then you'll notice that there's a bunch of lines here that separate some of the icons from the others. Those are in what are called groups. So I have the tables group, the queries group, the forms group, and so on. And then you'll notice, let me go to another tab, if some of those groups have more information than what they can contain within that group, Access will have a little expandable dialog box button that when you click on it, it'll expand and open up another window or a task pane here, the clipboard pane. When you're done, just go ahead and close out of it. And then new to Access 2010 is the File tab. In the previous version of Access 2007, they had the Office logo there. In fact, you can see it, it looks like the logo down here for Windows 7, that when you clicked on it, it opened up a file menu. Well, when you click on the File tab, boom, you're out of your database. Well, you didn't close out. You're in what is known as the backstage view. You're behind the scenes. So if you want to customize the environment of the Access program, you can click on Options, and I'll show you how to do that in a later training video. But to get back to my database to start working on it, you can do it one of two ways. Either come back up here and click on the File tab again, and it'll take you back to the tab that you are currently on. Like if I was on Create, I go File, click on File again, I go back to Create. Or, like I just showed you, if I'm back in the File Backstage view, just go ahead and click on one of the tabs up there. So again, this is the only tab that will take you behind the scenes. All the other tabs are meant for you to work on your database and not in the backstage view. From time to time, when you're working on objects within your uh, navigation pane here, you'll see additional uh, what are called contextual tabs that are related to what you're specifically working on. In other words, it'll add some more tabs up at the top saying these tabs are only viewable with that particular tables or queries or forms or reports. In fact, if I go ahead and double click on the tables, and open up the table in table view and there you go remember what I talked about and what I just showed you in a previous training video about Excel being a spreadsheet with a bunch of cells well that's what a table looks like just a bunch of cells here organized in this case book number the title of my books and then the book price and then notice up at the top this is what I'm talking about you have your basic tabs then you have your additional contextual tabs that relate to that table there's also another related tab fields so when I go ahead and close out those related tabs disappear. Now if I don't have enough room here and my uh, ribbon is taking up a lot of vertical space, come over here and either click on the arrow here and it will collapse it and then click on it to expand it again or use the shortcut. Of course when you hover over it, it gives you the shortcut Control F1, Control F1. So that way you got a little bit more room and then the same goes with the navigation pane. If you're working on something over here and you have it open in, in the main window, Go ahead and click on those uh, shutter bar open and close button to click on it once to close it, click on it once to expand it. And then finally, down below you have what's called the status bar. You'll get little prompts and notes. If there's any errors with your database, it'll list it here. Right now it says it's ready. You can also see over here I've got my number locks on. Just the status of your database. You can also right click on it and customize it. Number lock. If I go ahead and uncheck it, it disappears. Go ahead and check it, it pulls it back up. Click off in a blank area and we're good to go.